like loads for yogurt. So it's a, I think part of the reason is people are reluctant to use to use those more reasonable generic general current predictions in, 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 in biology is that you need to have a lot of assumptions. You, 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 you always add quite a lot to an abstraction, right? And you, you are either value what your assumptions are, mm -hmm. and, and, and then you say, oh, that's, that's what this, this happens, or you don't. And then you say, well, this applies to mammals. But it's, you know, it's, it's quite a big difference between, between physics, where, where, where the laws are pretty general to you. It's just it's one big group that um, yes. the law applies to the biology. Yes. And, you know, mammals is nothing, right? It's, it's not really a general pattern. Yes. In, in general, I, I agree with everything that you've said. Um, I think I was very clear at the end in saying that biology is complex, and biology is not physics. Okay, but I think what, um, but what we should take home is that our approach to science should be no different. Okay, and I think that is what is often left behind. Okay, so yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, it's of course very uh, hard uh, issue with the laws on what you expect that laws should be uh, really universally valid uh, in all predictions and all mm -hmm. instances. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 do you think that all of uh, the uh, predictions uh, you mentioned in instance of the laws uh, can be tweaked like that, for instance? Uh, uh, that the uh, law of, uh, of uh, uh, increase of population size and so on is uh, undoubtedly one of the constitutional uh, predictions in Darwinian right. evolution. Uh, but uh, to which degree it really uh, refers to all biological, biological phenomena as such, uh, and to which degree uh, it uh, is just uh, influenced by Malthusian view for the social dynamics. Because, for instance, uh, why not consider the uh, law of uh, coexistence or uh, something like that? Uh, it could be alternative also taken in account. Uh, for instance, in, uh, in uh, marine bacteria, uh, there is uh, nothing like that uh, competition for high population. They are just uh, reduced the uh, uh, the cell cycle to one year uh, period uh, and uh, care for some uh, uh, most intelligent exchange of uh, nuclear material. So mm -hmm. that, uh, it is quite a different strategy of uh, life and uh, in respect to the genomic, uh, the number of genomic combinations mm -hmm. and so on, 98 percent of uh, the life is just uh, just for some bacteria. So that, uh, uh, so, just so I understand, are, are, are you are you arguing that for most bacteria in the ocean, in marine life, do not undergo exponential growth or competition uh, for limiting resources? Yeah, so that, uh, that, uh, 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 this was just uh, just example of that, that we perhaps uh, can even expose some uh, some different. Uh, uh, different strategies that uh, do not fit quite well to the uh, to, 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 to the kind of the essential steps for evolution by natural selection. So I, I just want to make sure I understand. Are, are, are you saying that there you think that there are cases of organisms populations that don't abide by those essential steps outlined by Darwin? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I mean that may very well be. Um, um, I, there are cases um, for, for some of those steps and for uh, and, you know, uh, in cases of uh, um, maybe, um, you know, we'll, we'll see different evolutionary um, um, patterns in sexual and asexual um, populations, okay, so their genetics are different and maybe you may not have recombination and so the degree of heredity may not be as strong because of which we may see a different evolutionary dynamic with that but in general, I'm not aware of you know, any major groups of organisms that dominate in any particular part of the world that don't abide by most of the major steps. For example, you, you brought up you know, whether or not there are exceptions to the Malthusian um, rule or law, whatever we want to call it. Um, remember the, 
Malthus stated that in principle, any population, if left unchecked, okay, has the potential to grow exponentially. It, he's not saying that every population is growing exponentially. In fact, it's a very good thing, okay? I mean, even, you know, elephants, to use the very absurd example, elephants growing exponentially will at some point be growing at the speed of light, okay? Um, clearly, that's not happening. In fact, on average, most things in the world are not growing exponentially, okay? They're at essentially the crisis point. They're being regulated by resource limitation, and that's exactly the point um, that I think Darwin was making, that in most of the world, resources are limiting, therefore, you're going to see competition, okay? So the Malthusian principle is one of kind of like an ideal population. When resources are not limiting, all right, every population has the potential to grow exponentially, okay? I am asking one about war of Sparta. I have, I have some problem uh, with uh, uh, argue, arguing for the reasons that uh, there are no laws in biology. Uh, the seemingly most strong are... Uh, so we're in agreement the then, then, right? ...was uh, that uh, if we can run evolution, Twice, uh, it can't follow the same path uh, during those mm -hmm. two runs. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems really that uh, exclude laws, but uh, in physics, for example, uh, if I have somebody and I uh, let it fall down. There might be some obstacles which can't allow, which don't allow uh, the body. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't mean that in one case the body fell down and in second it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no gravity law. Mm -hmm. uh, it simply means that uh, there is some complex of Uh, so, so some more, more complex system. Mm -hmm. And the same is in the evolution. So uh, what, what do you think, think about uh, how, how, how it can exclude, uh, exclude uh, law in, in biology? Because uh, it, Feynman, uh, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Fe Feynman, mm -hmm. Feynman said that uh, law and physics can be seen directly from. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in general, I, I think I agree with most everything that you've said, um, but I didn't quite understand. Are, are you asking me a question, or are you asking if, if I agree with uh, that statement? Uh, perhaps I should have asked this question after David's question. Okay. Uh, okay. It is related, actually. Okay, but David <laughs> had. Hold on. <laughs> but David hasn't asked a question yet. <laughs> you're, you're living in the, in the future, man. I mean, that's like. <laughs> uh, uh, observing Kevin's work and Kevin's work. Yes. I realized that he used uh, the word rule right. as something which is underlying. Okay. Which is observing. Okay. I, it seems right. to me. It seems to me as uh, ancient ruler gave some rules. And right. It was the same. Okay. As I, I understand now. Okay. <laughs> so if if you notice, what I didn't talk about at all. In fact, I didn't touch on this. Was the issue of determinism and indeterminism, which get, which gets to if you replay the tape again. Yes, and so um, I, I kind of did that on purpose because you get into very deep philosophical um, debates about whether or not if the creator seeded the world with new rules, if it would be the same. I didn't want to touch on the issue of free will and determinism, indeterminism. Um, so I, um, I, I think those are much deeper uh, issues um, than, than the issues that, that I talked about. Uh, today, um, I, I think um, you know th this um, this notion of, of rules, laws, principles. It's a semantic 
um, argument, uh, and, and essentially what that word means is that, well, it gets down to what we're comfortable essentially talking about. If you want to use rule, law, you know, I'm fine with that, or general principle, or general pattern. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, it is related to the stuff that, you know, uh, when you uh, try to define law, you are always in a trouble somehow, you know. And if you read Darwin, for example, the, he uses the, this word, this term, uh, very differently mm -hmm. from physics, because and he is actually defining what he, what he means by law. Yeah. He's saying that, that he yeah. means by law basically yeah. anything which is observed, which is going on by some way, yes. which is really very very wide definition. Yes. You know, and if you define the law as pattern, you know, right. pattern is also anything observed. It's basically yeah. it's very yes. close to the uh, to the term phenomenon. But so, I think but I think we can all agree that as scientists. If we step back, you know, ultimately, you know, the goal is to find and describe pattern, okay, debate whether or not pattern is general, and then propose then explanations or mechanisms then for pattern, okay. No, no, I agree that the, and, if they are general, yeah, it's. And if you want to call those, you know, general rules, laws, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but okay, uh, but I am a bit hesitating uh, about uh, what actually uh, Ivan has asked. Uh, the question mm -hmm. of exponential growth. Okay, you, right. you mentioned it, it right. as a law, you know. But it, it is well, according to Darwin, okay, most yes. Most populations don't grow exponentially, right? That's they right. Well, thank, thank goodness. And, and, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have the potential, yeah. but they have many other potentials too. They have the yeah. potential to die. And not only living beings have the potential, the potentials. You know, every rock has the potential to spit, to split. Is it right. a law? You know, I don't know. Well, or, or, or remember, there is, um, it's not just that any population has the potential to grow exponentially. It's that any population that's not limited by resources right, grows exponentially. I mean, it's very clear in terms of, of the causation that it's resources, resource availability that's driving population growth. And the result of that then so the is exponential. Are, so you need the resources for the law. Yeah. Okay. Well, li listen, I'm... You're not going to peg me down and saying that whether or not the Malthus is a law or a rule, yeah. okay, yeah, or a principle. I, I am fine with whatever you want to call it, but it's general, okay? All right? Is law rather some mechanism, uh, some habit, mm -hmm. or uh, some, some social principle? Or... I, I'm comfortable calling it. A, a principle or a rule, okay, that is universal, okay, that is independent, space, time, organismal size, something like that. But it can be possible in biology. What? That? Absolutely. Okay. If you want to define it as that, and I'm comfortable defining it as that, as, as something that is universal, general, okay, that doesn't change with time and or space. Well, that gets to a deeper issue, I think, okay? And one can do this, I think, on, on evolutionarily. One can look across different clades, and we can look to see whether or not these rules have evolved. The same rule has evolved more than once, okay, independently. So, for example, some of these distributions in ecology, these life history invariants, okay? Um, now, I'm not 100% convinced that's the way to go, but I'm, I'm beginning to wonder, maybe that's what we should be you know, thinking about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly? These instances that you have shown us that in the, uh, in the more general sense, something in common, uh, such a, that they are about the time and energy in the more general sense. And it, it seems to me that you, you so, Ask that there is something probably behind these numbers or these non-dimensional numbers, and it seems to me that it could be something like a okay, there are some properties of organisms that has been that have been simply inherited from an ancestor. And it could just be some yes, just, just by chance, right, right, right. And these these uh, properties are somehow adopted. Mm -hmm. to the, Oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, to some, to some pictures of, the, of our solar system. But it's a bad joke. Right. We have proposed some kind of religionism, if you turn it. You know, so, for example, on, on, on the case of. Uh, so, so, so in the case of, of number of heartbeats being approximately... Because, you know, actually, you know, there is a continuous increase in the power of the sun, you know, during the... <laughs> and we and, uh, we have it, and it seems to me something like that, that. Maybe there is nothing behind these words, but behind these... Well, uh, I, I, think, I think that is definitely an open hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, of course, not much. Absolutely. But, but, you know, on the other hand, okay, um, doesn't because you've just made up that story doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Okay, so for in, in just the case of heartbeats, okay, you know it's a very fascinating example. Okay, why is it about a billion? Why isn't it say 500 or I don't know, you know, a kazillion? Okay, pick any number. Okay, why is it a billion? Okay, now. I don't know. I don't think anybody here necessarily knows. But what's absolutely fascinating is that that number is about the same for a mouse, okay, you know, for a cow, okay, or for a blue whale. All right. Despite that amazing diversity, okay, and, and change in not only the size, but also mammals, okay, and one could in conceive it, one could maybe try to extract some of these relationships, maybe try, try to look at the, the evolutionary dynamic of this. You know, if, if that has been approximately constant over evolutionary time, okay, and across many of these different species, I mean, I, I would feel comfortable calling that something very, something very general that probably reflects something fundamental about how um, mammalian physiology has to essentially scale despite enormous differences in diversity in life histories. And is it the uh, written words diversity? I mean that if you look on the dimension span of all these animals in the world, in the world uh, life Listen, life listen, life. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just as perplexed by these values as um, maybe you are, I okay? Mean, so I actually want to express that maybe there is no one that these numbers are like that. You know, that, that is definitely a good working hypothesis, okay? But you still have to prove it to me that there's nothing to those numbers, okay? Um, yeah, so that's science, right? So here, I've pointed out there's a literature on this. You can go for yourself and look at this literature, and, you know, you can come back and tell me, you know, do you think, you know, what's your hypothesis for why that is, okay? I think that's a general pattern that appears to be approximately invariant, okay, of organismal size and probably over evolutionary time. Probably, but I don't know. And that's just one example. I showed several others, too. I would add that uh, what uh, you have shown to us that it's definitely a good way to, to do scientific research. There are no doubt that you can, you can do it by this way. You will, you will find some, let's say, all, something which, which you can be driving, driving towards new, new findings. But I think uh, it, it needs to be, to be really crystal twice. Because, for example, there is some parallel to physics. And also, in the latest, it's very problematic to say what is, what is, how general laws in physics are. For example, you, you know, Newton, Newton's hypothesis, it's, it's clear, it's very, very well uh, proved when you do, I don't know, uh, in mechanics of, 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 of how planets are, mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. but if you, if you put, uh, if you try to to use it for uh, for um, bodies, more than two bodies, for example. Yeah. Yeah, for example. But uh, I I I try to say that it's kind of uh, the problem is which level of phenomenon you are phenomenon you are trying to on. Um, so when you when you try to do uh, Newton's mechanics in in let's say dimension of power where it it doesn't mean anything because mm -hmm. you know we we are now doing something here and 
what, what does new music say about it to us? Mm -hmm. So what, what, what I want to say that uh, you will catch some level of human, but I would say it's, it's mm, very, very mm, tough, tough level, or it, 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 it's something that you can reduce to, to uh, which can be quite down if you level it to the uh, things like, I don't know, weight or height mm -hmm. or time, but uh, it, 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 isn't, it isn't good when you are, when you are considering some, let's say it's, it's stranger, I know it, deeper, mm -hmm. deeper things about organism. For example, uniqueness. Uniqueness. Yeah. Uniqueness. All, all bodies. Biological, be, biological bodies. Biological yeah. bodies. Yeah. 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 Must be, must be somehow different. Yeah. Because law says what is, what is, what is general, but uh, it, it's, it's obvious. That, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so there is probably. I think you are always. Uh, Sure. No, I, I very much appreciate everything um, that you mentioned. I, I think this issue of uniqueness is, is a uh, is a very deep one and important one. And I think um, for biologists, probably one of the main reasons that we all um, are driven, um, kind of drawn to biology, including myself, is a love for diversity and just why things are unique from each other. You know, identifying different species based on subtleties of traits. But, and this notion of abstracting nature, on the one hand, seems violent. Um, I think is, I don't know if that's the right word, but somewhat foreign. But in many ways, um, in order to kind of distill the, in order to distill the underlying simplicities of that one sees in, in complex world, um, one needs to do a certain level of abstraction, okay, in order to gain kind of a foothold, okay, in terms of understanding what may be general kind of underlying. Um, biology. Of yeah, course, it, it's the question if it's, it's underlying. Right. Yeah, if it's an emergence, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, well, it doesn't mean that if you, if, you, if you know about something which is general, <coughs> that it is underlying. Yes. Th there are still some deep issues of, well, if you find something that's general, does that necessarily mean a hypothesized rule that you invoked is indeed what's causing the pattern. How do you test this? How do you sort it out, either experimentally? Okay? Um, and there's some issues there, but I, I, I think there are many ways that one can, can get over that. Right? And to, to get back to your kind of mentioning of, of Newton, I, I mean, it may very well be that within biology we're not going to be able, you know, we're not going to have like uh, something equivalent to Boltzmann's constant or some of these other you know, physical constants that you can go out to, I don't know, a gazillion decimal places and calculate something. Um, you know, these biological constants, you know, maybe <laughs> they're plus or minus an order of magnitude, okay, um, which is, you know, pretty sloppy, but still, I mean, despite this absolutely enormous complexity that we see in the world, the fact that we can still talk about several of these patterns, to me, is absolutely remarkable. Okay? That you can describe an allometric, you can describe growth, or the proportions of how traits change within a body, with a very simple mathematical function. Okay? It is remarkable to me that some of these life history invariants, all right, despite the amazing diversity in these different clades, you tend to see these life history invariants. That is absolutely remarkable to me, okay? And that suggests that there's something deeper, more general in biology. 
Don't ask about the concept. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Because I have read interesting criticism of one of such life story invariant, which was based on the fact that um, basically the invariants are artifact because they are estimated from correlations. Uh, this example was about. Is this this is Sean Nee's paper? This is Sean Nee's paper that you're referring to. Uh, it was replied to also by the past. Yeah. But yeah. It, uh -huh. It's similar to all very challenging The basic thing <coughs> is that we compare very small and very large animals, and that, for example, for a fly that lives 10 days, it must measure at 2 days. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that lives uh, 50 years can measure at the age mm -hmm. of 3 years, so we can we always have to find some correlation. And the invariant was found as a slope of what this correlation right. Right. But in fact, I'm, I'm very much aware of the, the, the papers and arguments that, that you're pointing to. Um, I think it's wrong, um, to be very simple. Um, and uh, like your other question, I've also written a paper about this um, that I can show you showing exactly why that is wrong and um, why life history invariants are not just uh, um, what you'd expect from uh, random expectation. It actually gets back to your question about why a billion. There was actually a very similar argument that was made by, um, by um, Nee and several others in the UK a few years back. So we had this back and forth in, in science about that. Um, but um, yeah, some, some of these patterns, especially um, life history invariants, have been controversial because people are trying to kind of under, and, and, and I think that's good because that reflects the maturation of the science, right? Because people are trying to figure out, well, what does this mean? Can I, so, so on the one hand, there's the hypothesis that I can create these patterns by just some artifact of, I don't know, statistics or just the fact that things have to be correlated. Okay, and there's the other hypothesis that no, they actually have biological meaning and are rooted in biological mechanisms. Okay, and what's very nice with those two differing opposing views is that you can debate, you can have it out. Okay, in terms of well, what do the data say? All right, do the assumptions best match the reality? And then in the end, all right, we'll come to some conclusion about whether or not these are real or not. And um, and so, I mean, I would argue that, you know, those, those arguments on the other side for, um, for why life history invariants aren't real, okay, are, are, are just not correct. And the data do not support kind of essentially the assumptions that they're drawing from. And I'm happy to show you the paper and analyses outlining that, okay. And if you want, I can even bring it up on my computer and go over it together. But you probably don't, all right, you probably don't want to do that right now, but I, because I'd like to take some other questions. Oh. Just a related question. Uh, as concerned uh, the energetic constant of, uh, of life, are there some, say, direct measurement of it, or, or it is just uh, derived uh, from the You know, th th that's, a, that, that's a very good question. Um, uh, so I'm citing uh, Stahl's earlier 1962 paper. Somebody needs to go back and remeasure these much more accurately. Okay. Um, and some people have, and it appears as if that number is very similar. Okay. Um, now, I cited the most recent paper, the paper that came out yesterday, um, de doing not as essentially the same because uh, they're looking at it being um, the energy produced per unit carbon, okay, which is a little different, but it's related. Um, and um, you know, so they're using a much more you know, accurate technique, and that paper just came out. But that's a good question. Yes. I don't agree against uh, biological laws in general. However, um, I'm sorry, you, you don't? Or? I don't argue against biological okay. rules or okay. uh, in general. However, uh, most of the examples you gave us uh, seems to me just special examples of uh, physical laws. Physics okay. laws. Physics, sorry. Um, some of them are biomechanics. I mean, you can, you can argue you know, that, yeah. I, so in, in that case, I see nothing wrong with that, okay? But are they then uh, 
biologic rules that are there in the standard okay. um, Anything that, that's inherently kind of biological? Well, you know, on, on the one hand, you know, that, that, that's a very good question, but the, what I guess I'm questioning is the, your underlying kind of pretext for kind of, I think that's the right word, for asking that, that question as if, if the underlying rules were just all physics, then would that be a good or a bad thing? Is that, I'm trying to figure out, is that what you're... I, I, well, I, I should. Well, let me just say, I'm, I'm not, you know, arguing that you know biology is physics, okay? Because clearly, you know, biology is very different, you know, in, in many ways. But biology is a complex adaptive system, okay? And so there are several principles, okay, that underlie that, okay? Um, some of it being self-replication, which is essentially evolutionary dynamics, right? So, so obviously, um, we're not throwing that away. That's that's a core part, and and I asked whether or not there are other principles helping to shape essentially the entangled bank. Okay, So yes, evolution by natural selection and then we can bring in all the other forces of evolution. Okay, But there appear to be all right, some other kind of underlying rules or generalities. Some of them may be essentially just based in physics, biomechanics. The fundamental basis of some of these energetic relationships, I don't know what they reflect. I don't know if they reflect just entropy. Okay, if that's true, that's very interesting. Okay, that's extremely interesting. Okay, but there's that is likely shaped by biology as well. All right, so I, I don't think I would argue that everything we can just boil down to physics. Okay, and very we're dealing with a complex adaptive system. We're dealing with replicating entities. Clearly, physics will be important. Okay, but I don't think it's just going to be. Physics. Is that am I answering your question? Okay. Okay. Uh, I just think how to put together some of these rules you mentioned in the description of the computer system as a fairly combined. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows the scheme uh, is grown often, yes. created by organisms uh, yes. based on photosynthesis and predators on the top. Right. Uh, but <coughs> if I recall correctly, there is one exception kind of ecosystems from Germany, where the pyramid should be just upside, upside down. And the explanation should be that the energy current through, through these organisms at bottom is much, much higher than normal. The rate of production, yes. The, the rate of production. Yes. Uh, the, 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 yes. Mass per, per, yes. Per, 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 yes. Yes. So I'm just thinking, if this is right, I'm not sure if, if yeah. I recall correctly, but if it, Excellent question. Um, to, to, to very honestly answer your question, I don't know. Okay, um, but what's really intriguing is that you mentioned trophic pyramids, and you, you you mentioned the case in coral reefs. They tend to be inverted, and the reason for that is that if you just look at a biomass period, I'm sorry, biomass pyramid, you're forgetting that you should be calculating the rate of production and not just the standing crop. Yeah, fine. Okay, so. Um, but what's actually very interesting is that um, you know I, I could have easily I mean you know brought up uh, a lot of these trophic rules, some of these being Lindemann efficiencies. That is, as you follow you know, the dissipation of resources or energy from one trophic level to the next, there's usually a set amount of loss. Okay, that has to do with obviously the you know release of CO2, burning of of um, fuel, and so on. So um, so yes, these trophic rules okay, are, are probably, yes, extremely important. And we know that they shape trophic dynamics and you know, the shape of trophic pyramids and so on. Yes. Well, well, I guess my, what, what I was um, bringing up was that we know that there are, there are biological efficiencies of conversion. Okay, so when you take in resources, there's only so much efficiency that you have. You're not able to convert, you know, 100% of the food, okay, you eat, okay, into biomass, all right? Um, a certain fraction of that is lost to heat, 
right? So we know that those efficiencies tend to vary a little bit, but they're fairly similar, right? Now, what you're, you're saying is that maybe those efficiencies are related to the lifespan um, and some of these energetic uh, 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 constants that I, that I showed you. Is that? Yeah, is that? Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my, my point was how, how to put these things together. I mean, Good question. It's, an, it's a fantastic question. An easy way to do that would be to simulate it. Okay, you could simulate a trophic web. You could, you could put in um, some of these Lindemann efficiencies. Um, so you could have um, almost like a cellular automata, things running around eating each other. You could put in these physical dissipation rules, but then you could put in these energetic rules in terms of differences in body size, in terms of their energetic requirements and how long they live and just put those rules in and it'd be very interesting to see if what emerges are trophic webs that look like what we have in the real world. I don't know. That's, that's a PhD right there. Right? It's a good dissertation. Right? Yeah. Well, not being a physicist, I, I, I feel very uncomfortable you know, you know, going well outside of biology talking about details of statistical physics. Um, but um, I, again, I think what I would like to reiterate, um, I, I don't think the argument should be whether or not biology is physics and physics is biology. I think, if anything, our approach to science should be the same. Okay? And biology is a complex adaptive systems and, and maybe in statistical physics there may be analogies. Okay? Um, but um, I think the approach to science, that is identifying general patterns, okay, proposing mechanisms or rules that underlie then those patterns and testing them okay, is, should be the same. Right? So I see no difference in terms of how science should be applied. Right? So in some ways that should be a no-brainer, but I often find it surprising, especially with my students or graduate students, that you know, how often we enter into these conversations. Okay? Um, and I think it's good to remind ourselves that I think this debate whether or not you know, we have physics envy or whether or not biology is different than, than physics, in some ways is kind of a red herring you know, because I think the approach in terms of doing science okay, should be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to argue with, uh, against your conclusion, mm -hmm. but uh, against your say, starting points. Mm -hmm. uh, static, I, static ones. Static, uh, oh, starting ones. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think that, that the problem is uh, biological law concerns uh, two huge complexity of biological systems. You, I, you, you don't think it's due to the complexity of biological systems? That I, I don't think that it's problem okay. with, with uh, huge complexity. Okay. I, I'm afraid that it's problem with its huge diversity. Huge diversity, because yes. Because of this huge diversity, we have also a huge diversity of uh, biological laws. And then there is no general law. There is a lot of very small laws, of them concerning <laughs> very small parts of biology. Yeah, how small, right? right. right. Of, of course, you showed that there is also some general laws, but uh, there is a very small fraction of biological law, laws as such. Mm -hmm. General. Well, I, I guess what I would do is I would ask then, why is there that diversity? Of biological opinions or approaches. Because okay. There's a lot of species. Well, I would argue that it's because biology is complex. Okay. If biology was fairly simple, we'd all, in general, be in agreement, right? And there'd probably be a very few of you in this room. Okay. Um, you know, why is it that you know we study all the different systems, all the different organisms, and all the different parts? You know, that we do. It's because, well, I, biology is incredibly complex. Um, 
but at the same time, you, know, you have shown some laws which you uh, term general, but they mm -hmm. concern, concern, for example, only mammals. You know, uh -huh. mammals <laughs> is a really you know, yeah. small fraction. So in a sense, this is true. You know, for, yeah. uh, there are so many taxa which would uh, yes. you know, behave differently. So well, it would be. <sighs> No, I have to say, sometimes I feel like I'm a fish out of water. I mean, I, I really am a botanist, okay? I've always been one. And when I did my PhD, I worked under a zoologist for my PhD, Jim Brown, right? And it was actually very interesting because in my botanical head, I kept talking to this very smart man who was a mammologist. And they always had certain ways of doing things. They had patterns that they liked to describe. And in, in my head, I was always trying to translate how we would do this in plant ecology or plant physiology with how zoologists measure things. And it's actually very interesting because when you boil it down, they're very different people in terms of their history, okay, the, the, the types of questions that they find interesting. And so what's interesting is that we started plotting some patterns and measuring some physiology like zoologists would, but in plants. And what we found was that actually, hey, you know what, they're actually similar. If you actually talk to one another and you start looking at these different patterns. And so I, I think maybe there are um, many more opportunities to do that, okay, between different sub-disciplines um, to ask very similar questions, okay. Um, and, um, and I think, I mean, that's being done. You know, there's, there's a lot being done, but we can easily do more of that. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just disagree with both of you. Oh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> do you want to take this one, or should I? No, no. It's a fast way. It's a fast way. It's obvious that it has nothing to do with it. Nor diversity. It has uh, three things. The first is very sympathetic. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what? The first, first one is very sympathetic. I, uh, sympathetic. Sympathetic. Yes, okay. Sympathetic about it. And it's because uh, they start uh, romantic. They like nature. They like is that number two? They like plants. Yeah. Uh, so. They have been searching for some more yeah. universality. They admire this diversity and make verses. Okay, so that's two, right? No, that's the first. Oh, that's the first one, okay. Okay, so romantic. Okay. more serious problem is problem of number. Because in statistical physics we have, uh, we have many, many thousands of particles. And if a physics, say, say thermodynamic laws, if a physics, 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 mm -hmm. focus on a very small sample of small number of particles, even those laws can be, can be inverted. They are not definitely universal law in very small samples. Yes. So uh, the fact that we can observe in physics some very, very universal Because you have a lot of a lot of particles. You have a lot of particles number. or number. Right, yes. right, right, right. And third, third thing uh, uh, may be more serious, but I don't know, uh, is that uh, Physics uh, use mathematics, uh, which has been have, have been developed for almost thousand, more than thousand years to describe non-animate, non-animate nature. So it it's suitable to describe physical problems. I, I don't want to be talking about the details now because it mm -hmm. will be long. But uh, it lasted more than a thousand years to adopt this mathematics which has been developed for animate nature to employ to physical problems successfully. And in biology we started in this way of thinking less than 2,000, 
200 years ago. So what what we can we, we can't simply expect some success now. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I'm a little, sorry. this is going to take a little while, so. Um, well, I, uh, are you sure? Not me? Okay, all right, all right. Um, I, th I think I agree with, with all of your points, right? Um, uh, I mean, I, I, in general, I, I do think that um, biologists become biologists because they love um, nature and diversity. I, and I'm one of them, right? Um, and uh, and and I and I do think that that um, does tend to promote maybe a difference in culture, um, in terms of uh, because oftentimes um, um, we're essentially you know the same size and we operate on the same scale as the organisms that we study, whereas a physicist obviously is tremendously many orders of magnitude different in terms of our scale of perception on the things that we study, I'm sorry, that they study, um, that there's, there's a big difference in terms of, you know, kind of the systems. Um, now, what I find absolutely exciting right now is that now with the advent of um, bioinformatics, with all of this information, um, with ecoinformatics, with things like the breeding bird survey, okay, like the study by uh, Kit and Stanley, um, you're able then to characterize, almost like a physicist, the interaction of many, many different individuals, organisms, species, and describe their distributions, okay, very well. And at that level, like that plot by Kit and Stanley, they're very well behaved, okay. And in many ways, that's kind of analogous maybe to um, physicists studying the, you know, well, basically the gas laws or understanding of, you know, Charles' law, Boyle's law, and so on. Um, and so, what was your third point? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, the, uh, we the map. The map. The map. Oh. Machinery. Machinery. Uh, the main, yes, main that's difference right. between physics and biology actually is that in, uh, in, in physics, uh, uh, if when we have some uh, some relationship, the deviation from this relationship uh, is uh, uh, those deviations are light on some mm -hmm. elastic elastic mm -hmm. uh, rats uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, can be described by some, by, by some law and tower, but uh, uh, in biology actually we must be dealing with constraints and yeah. composing those constraints uh, diverge our, our results and our precise fit. So uh, we need uh, some machinery, mathematical mm -hmm. machinery dealing with constraints and it hasn't been de developed. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with that. And so... Yeah, so, so there's, I mean, biology is still a young science. Yeah. And uh, I think now, especially with the advent of, of all of this information, with you know, genomics, you know, with bioinformatics, ecoinformatics, I think we really do have the potential then to not only describe pattern like we've never been able to describe pattern before, but really characterize you know, mathematically the nature of, of these distributions, some of that is going to include you know, under, um, characterizing constraints, limits on systems, and so on. And that requires, as, as you say, you know, um, some new approaches to doing that. Right. Okay, thank you. I think it's... All right, thanks, David. Up. So thank you all. And uh, Brian is going, not only going with us to the pub, but also he's going to be here until June. So if you want anything from him, just ask me. Or... Okay. So thank you for your time, by the way.